start on page 648. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos to all of you. It's so nice to see you on this very, very hot uh, Friday, this very, very hot last day of the week. Um, and it's especially good to see some of you who I haven't seen in quite a while or those of you who are visiting uh, and with us for the first time. Um, we celebrate Shabbat every Friday night and Saturday, but on this particular Shabbat, we are not just celebrating the end of the week, we are also celebrating the Bar Mitzvah weekend of Ari Massey. So we have family and friends who are here and a lot more who are going to be here tomorrow morning. Um, so Mazal Tov in advance. Uh, Ari, to you and to your family, your grandparents, uh, your extended family, and all of those who have come here from near and far to celebrate with you. Where do we, what's the furthest away we have people who are here? Texas? We're in Texas. Okay, good. Well, and we'll probably have some more tomorrow from, that's for tomorrow, okay. Got it, got it. Well, good. Well, and we have people watching from home as well. So to begin our Shabbat service and to have Ari come up to help me and Gordon lead the service tonight, I'd like to invite Ari and Danya and Connor and Jordan and Noah. I don't see Noah. Oh, there, there he is. So come on up. And if you want to follow along, the candle lighting blessing is on page 120. <laughs> they don't want to stay lit. Oh, you got those you trick candles. I got the, you got the trick candles, huh? I mean, we thought we'd All like right, to find ahead. the trick candle situation. I, we think they might be part of the air conditioning. Oh, the air's coming down. Yeah. Yeah. The matches aren't going to help make it better. It's just they won't. Trick candles are not going to help at all. I'm going to be so bad. It won't like. Great idea. I'm not, I'm not completely incompetent. There, there are no good. <laughs> Ooh. Ah. Oh, boy. All sorts of problems here. I'm really not. Yeah, that does not want to. Oh. Okay, here, try that then, Jordan. 
Look at Jordan. I guess that works. So we just needed Jordan. Oh, all right, there you have it. <laughs> One and down, light a match. Good okay. job, Jordan. Yeah. All right, ready? Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kishanu mitzotav, v'tzivahanu, le'ha'vikner, le'ha'vikner, shel shabbat. Amen. While Ari gets his book and comes up and joins us, I'm going to ask you to turn to page 142, and we are going to sing Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi El Yom. Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Boachem le Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi El Yom. Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu ni le Shalom. Malachi Hashalom, Malachi El Yom, Mi Melech, Malachi Hamlachim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Dechem le Shalom, Malachi Hashalom, Malachi El Yom, Mi Melech. Malachi Hamlachim, Akadosh Baharu. We're going to continue with the Chatzik Kaddish on page 144. If you are able, please rise. Yit Kadav, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabba, Yamam, Yivrach, Yirutei, Yam, Lich, Malchutei, Bechaye chon uvyom echon Bukhaye de chol be Yisrael Bagala, bagala Ubizman kariv Klimeru, amen Yehe shmi rabba mavarach Lalam ulom e'almaya Yitbarach, yitbarach V'yishtabach, v'yitpa'ar V'yitromam v'yitnaseh Vit hadar, vit halev, vit halal, shemei l'kudusha b'richu. Leila min kol b'rchata v'shirata, tush v'chata v'nechem ata, dam iram v'yama, v'imru, amen. The Baruch Hu is on page 146. I'll lead it. Adonai Ahamevorah Baruch Adonai Ahamevorah Ahamevorah Le'olam va'et Ahamevorah Ahamevorah Please join me in English at the top of page 149. Praise to you, Adonai our God, 
from whom the evening flows. Your wisdom sets the way of which, on which time and season glide. Your breath guides the sail of the stars. Creator of the tide of time and light, you guide the current of day into night. As heaven spans to infinity, you set its course for eternity. Praise to you, Adonai, our God, from whom the evening flows. Baruch atah Adonai, Hama Ariv Aravim. Page 151. As you taught Torah to those whose names I bear, teach me Torah too. Its mystery beckons, yet I struggle with its truth. You meant Torah for me. Did you mean the struggle for me too? Don't let me struggle alone. Help me to understand, to be wise, to listen, to know. Lead me into the mystery. Baruch atah Adonai, Ohev Amo Yisrael. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Baruch Shem, Kevod Mahalchuto, Leolam Page 157. Emet ve Kolzot, standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot. That wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt. That there is a better place, a promised land. That the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness. That there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. Page 158. <laughs> Page 161. Let there be love and understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from life's storms. 
Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up waiting to do your will. Baruch atah Adonai, hapore suchat shalom aleinu ve'al kol amo Yisrael ve'al Yerushalayim. Aski venu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom, l'shalom. V'hamidenu shomreinu l'chayim. Ufros aleinu sukat shlomecha, ufros aleinu sukat shlomecha. Shalom, the shalom, the shalom, the Shelter us beneath your wings, O Adonai. Guard us from all harmful things, O Adonai. Keep us safe throughout the night till we wake with morning's light. Teach us God wrong and right. Amen. 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 Amidah, the standing prayer, is on page 164. Please rise. Ari is going to lead us on the first three blessings, and then I ask you to continue on your own and to please be seated after you've finished. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu v'Elohei Avoteinu v'Imoteinu, Elohei Abraham, Elohei Yitzchak, Elohei Yaakov, Elohei Sarah, Elohei Rivka, Elohei Rachel, Elohei Leia, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor v'Hanura, El Elyon, Gomer Chasadim Tovim, Bekone Hakol, Bezrochei Chastei Avot Soim Ahots. So mech no flim vecholim, umatir asurim, umechaye emunato, lishene afar, michamocha bal gavurot, umidom elach, melech mimit, umechaye, umat miach yeshua, neman atalaha chayot hakol, baruch atah adonai,
page 179. Start with just the syllables A O A. I hear what you're doing. We're gonna do okay, so you guys, you got the easy part. A O and that side too. Oh because I can tell you guys are the experts. A O. So you just keep doing that. A ready, here we go. Lo yesago. Fade out. You keep going. Okay. Very nice. The problem is that you have to be here now every Friday night. <laughs> but I'm sure you can you can manage that. I mean, you're not from Texas, so it's okay. <laughs> oh well. That's closer. At this point in our service, we think of those in need of healing on this Shabbat, healing of body, healing of spirit, and healing of heart. And we ask God to bestow the bracha, the blessing of Rafua Shlema, full and complete healing on the following men and women from our CBS family or those known and loved by our congregation. Lynn Feingold, Ilana Massey, Kevin Brackett, Michelle Camisia, Joshua Hyman, Dylan Bonick, Diane Butler, Elsa Loach, Jesse Friedman, Tom Sabo, Beverly Eigner, Michael Kassen, Ed Esten, Roger Widman, and Marjorie Gilberg. And if anyone has a name they wish to add, please do so. Misha Barak prayer is on page 511. Find courage to make. 
make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Bless those in need of healing with Rafu Ashlema, the renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos again, special welcome to all of the family and, and visitors here for Ari, uh, as well as anyone else who's visiting with us uh, tonight, and I know there are a few. Last week, we observed the festival of Shavuot, one of the three pilgrimage festivals in Judaism. We did a, a I won't say it was an all-night study session, but we did a late-night study session uh, in the social hall, and then last weekend, Saturday morning, we studied from... One of the books, there are five scrolls, uh, five Megillot in the uh, Hebrew Bible that are connected to different holidays. For example, we have the scroll of Esther in the back there. Uh, that's connected to which holiday? Purim. What is the scroll? This is extra credit. Ari, if you get it or anyone in your orbit, what scroll do we read or what book do we read on Shavuot? Anyone know? The book of Ruth. The only other of the five, actually two of the five scrolls are named after women. So 40% of our scrolls are named after women, Esther and Ruth. So we study the book of Ruth. And the book of Ruth is a very um, beautiful and short Megillah or, or scroll in the Hebrew Bible. And it really highlights what um, for many rabbis uh, is the paradigmatic convert, the paradigmatic person who chooses to become Jewish, and that's Ruth. And the story opens with Ruth and her sister, along with their mother-in-law, Naomi, who is Jewish, but for a variety of reasons, very tragic reasons, they have to leave where they are in the land of Moab and make their way back to the land of Israel, where they had left because of a famine. So they're refugees. They're the poorest of the poor. Naomi is a single mother and um, tells her daughters-in-law to turn back. You don't need to come with me. It's going to be an arduous journey. We don't know what's awaiting us when we get back to Israel. They're going to Bethlehem. Uh, Bethlehem. And one of the daughters-in-law goes back. But Ruth says, no, I'm not going to go back. I'm going to stay by your side. Naomi, the Jewish woman, tells her three times, go back. There's nothing for you there. There's nothing for you with me. I don't have anything to offer you. I'm a poor refugee. She tells her three times, and after three times, Ruth still says, no, I'm going to stay by your side. And then she utters what is arguably one of the most famous and beautiful passages in all of Hebrew scriptures, and I want to just read it for you tonight. It's a book of Ruth, uh, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, and I think it'll be familiar to some of you. So after Naomi tries for the third and final time to convince her to go back, Ruth says to her, do not urge me to leave you, to turn back and not follow you. For wherever you go, I will go. And where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you will die, will I die and there I will be buried. Thus and more may the Lord do to me, if anything but death parts you and me. So here Ruth makes this verbal declaration that I want to be with you. She links her life and destiny with that of Naomi and of the Jewish people. Wherever you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. She links her life with Naomi's and with the Jewish people geographically. She also links it with them Nationally, your people will be my people. Your ethnic group, your national group will be my group. And your God will be my God. She also connects her life spiritually, religiously with Naomi. 
So her destiny is going to be the same destiny as that of the Jewish people. And that's all it takes at this point in the Jewish tradition, a verbal declaration. And poof, well, it's more than poof, but she becomes a Jew. Now, this idea of making a verbal declaration and becoming a member of another religion is not unique to Judaism. In certain strands of Christianity, you make a certain declaration and you take Jesus as your savior and uh, as the person who's gonna forgive your sins and you become a Christian. In Islam, there's a declaration, I don't remember exactly what it is, but there's a certain formula that you can recite and after reciting that verbal declaration, you become a Muslim. Now, Ruth does the exact same thing here. And after this verbal declaration, she is viewed as a Jewish person, as a Jewish woman. And not only is she now a, a member of the Jewish people, she winds up becoming the grandmother of David and uh, uh, ultimately the messianic line in the Jewish tradition is connected to Ruth, someone who chose Judaism, someone who was not born into Judaism. Now today, conversion to Judaism is much more complicated to th than that. And I know we have several people in this room who have chosen to become Jewish and who have gone through the conversion process. You know, what do you have to do? I, I, I know that some rabbis, like Naomi, tell the person who's thinking about converting to Judaism, three times they turn them away, just like Naomi tried to turn Ruth away three times. They engage in a course of study. I know that when I work with conversion students, I require at least one year of, of study with me or, or with a course or, or with both before becoming Jewish. Uh, you meet with a Beit Din, a rabbinic tribunal or a group of um, uh, leaders in the community to go through a period of questioning, almost an oral exam. And then if you're a woman or a man, you will um, go to the mikvah uh, and immerse yourself in a Jewish ritual bath. So you have to go through all of these different steps before you can become Jewish. And if you're Orthodox, it's even more involved than that. So the question for me, after having looked at Ruth and, and seen that all she does is, it's a lot more than a verbal declaration, but, but that's how it starts by linking her life verbally with the Jewish people, have we made something simple, overly complicated? Why, why, why is it so complicated now to become a Jew, whereas for Ruth and for people in other religious traditions, it, it's really not? And there are other examples of this. What, what do we do in terms of Shabbat, Shabbat observance today? In the Torah, when we learn about the, the commandment to observe Shabbat, it occurs most famously in the Ten Commandments. We have a, a representation of them behind me at the Ark. One, in the first instance, it says, uh, Shamor et HaShabbat, observe the Sabbath. And then later it says, Zachor et HaShabbat, remember the Sabbath. But it gives us great leeway into how we're going to practice this. It doesn't tell us that you need to go to synagogue to observe Shabbat. That came many, many centuries later when we had synagogues. It doesn't say you have to light two candles. It doesn't say you have to say the blessing over, over challah. Those are all much later additions. In the Bible, it gives us great freedom uh, to follow this very simple declaration. Observe Shabbat, remember Shabbat. There are an infinite number of ways we could do that. Or kashrut, the dietary laws. In the Tanakh, in the Torah, it tells us don't eat um, predators, don't eat predatory birds, don't eat predatory mammals, uh, don't eat scavengers, no, no shellfish, no, no pork, and don't bathe a kid in its mother's milk. Nowhere does it have all of the, uh, I don't want to say crazy, I grew up in a kosher home, but all of the very complicated stipulations of, of keeping kosher, some of you did as well, uh, today. My, my mother used to go to a kosher butcher to, to get meat. You know, the meat has to be soaked in, in salt. It doesn't say anything about that in, in the Bible. Um, you can't mix dairy with, uh, with fowl, with, with turkey or duck or, or chicken. Um, fowl don't lactate. Why should you not be able to mix dairy or milk with animals that don't produce milk? So it gets more and more complicated 
uh, over the centuries, or finally Passover. In the, in the Torah, there are only three things that we're supposed to do to honor and remember uh, Passover. Does anyone know what those three things are? They're mentioned in the Haggadah also. Eat, first of all, eat. What's the most famous thing we eat on Passover? Eat unleavened bread, right? Eat, eat matzah, eat unleavened bread. What's the other thing we're supposed to eat? Maror, bitter herbs. And then finally, we don't really do this today, we do it symbolically, but the Pesach, the Paschal lamb. In antiquity, they would actually slaughter, slaughter an animal. And th that was it, those three things. Paschal lamb, uh, matzah, and bitter herbs. Think of all the things we do today to observe Passover. We have a Seder. The Seder didn't exist until 2,000 years ago. We have a Haggadah, a Haggadah, a script, basically. There's no mention of a Haggadah, Haggadah in, in the Bible. We have the four, four glasses of wine that we drink. We have the four questions. We have Elijah's cup. We have opening the door for Elijah. We have all these different myriad things that didn't even exist um, in, in biblical times. So we can see a pattern here of starting with simple principles, simple practices, and then over time having them get more and more involved, more and more complicated, and I would say for many Jews today, uh, more and more difficult for us to observe. Now, those of you who are members of CBS and uh, who come regularly on Shabbat or for adult education have often heard me praise the rabbis for having reinvented and, and for having saved Judaism. Because when the Romans destroyed the temple 2,000 years ago, and you've heard me say this, and when, when they destroyed the priesthood, when they obliterated uh, the, the Jewish way of life that had existed for millennia, the rabbis had to recreate Judaism in a completely new way. And the rabbinate replaced the priesthood. Uh, the synagogue replaced the temple. Prayers, liturgy, like Ari led Gordon and I and all of us tonight, prayers replaced animal sacrifice. And Judaism was completely reconstructed, completely uh, transformed. But in this particular case, I don't know if the rabbis were completely right. I don't know if making our various practices um, and observances more and more complicated more and more onerous was something that is necessarily um, good for the Jewish people. I think a lot of my more traditional colleagues uh, might not, not agree with me, but I think the level of observance that we see in the vast majority of Jews in, in, in the West, in Europe and in North America, would seem to reflect the fact that this overly complicated way of being Jewish, let alone of converting to Judaism, is not necessarily working in our best interests. Did they go too far? Did the rabbis go too far in adding uh, to our tradition and making it, um, again, uh, so complicated and, and, and so onerous uh, for, for so many? So do we add to the tradition? Do we take away from the tradition? Do we reinterpret the tradition? Every denomination, conservative, reform, orthodox, reconstructionist, secular humanist, Jewish renewal. Every denomination needs to figure out for themselves how to answer that question. Every congregation needs to figure out how to answer that question. Every Jew needs to figure out how to answer that question. And I would ask each of you, other than celebrating Shabbat and celebrating Ari's uh, monumental bar mitzvah, I'd ask each of you to think about this question over the Shabbat um, and in the year ahead because it'll determine our relationship with Judaism. And if we don't have a relationship with Judaism, then what good are all of these practices um, and observances and mitzvot? So that's my thought for you tonight and on this Shabbat, and um, I hope you will give it uh, some serious consideration. You know, we're uh, next year for uh, Passover, Karen and I would like to invite you. We're doing a real simple real simple, back to basic basics, you know, and so we would like you and Carolyn to come over, and we're just doing like three things, but we'd like you guys to slaughter the lamb. I just, <laughs> but otherwise, just real simple. Okay, okay. I think I have to go back to graduate school to learn how to slaughter a ram, but I'm sure I can find somewhere I, I Not can, so simple, yeah, huh? Not so simple. <laughs> 
Okay, on that note of slaughtering lambs, there's no real segue, but we are gonna turn to page 586 for the Alenu. Please rise. I thought that was the segue. Yeah, I guess that was the segue. <laughs> Alenu le shape akla don hako, la take du la le yotze hebre sheet, shelo asanu kiko ye haratzot, velo hosama nu kamish pachota adama, shelo sam kel kenu kahem, vigo horale nu kechol hamonam, va nach nu korim, umish tachavim umodim, lifne melech. Malche hamachim hakados varuhu bene emar bahaya adonai the melech al kuha aretz bayom hahu bayom hahu ye adonai echad ushemo 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 e. Please be seated. I'm still thinking of slaughtering lambs. I, there, there, when I lived in New York, there was a bar I used to frequent in the, in, in the West Village called The Slaughtered Lamb. And I think there, in the movie, that comes from uh, the movie American Werewolf in London, where the two guys toward the beginning go to a place called The Slaughtered Lamb, right? I don't think I'm making that up. So anyway, put that in a pipe and smoke it. Okay. Another wonderful segue, announcements. Uh, I would like to invite up board member and president, actually I think this is your first or second Shabbat as president, second Shabbat as president of CBS, Roberta Solomon to read some important announcements tonight. And it's only been two weeks, but you've been doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job as president so far. I haven't slaughtered any lambs recently, so, and I don't quite know where to go after that. But anyway, Shabbat Shalom, everyone, and welcome, welcome. I'd like to give a special welcome, again, as echoing Rabbi Niles, to Danya and Connor Massey and their friends and family who are here to celebrate tomorrow, Ari Massey's becoming a bar mitzvah. It's very exciting. Tomorrow at 10.30, it will be here at CBS, and it will also be live streamed as well. So very exciting, and we look forward to it. Next, don't forget to register for the CBS Nine Hole Golf Tournament coming up on June 12th. At 9 a.m., play with CBS members and friends at Bittner's Golf Course and join in lunch after at the Yountville Veteran Memorial Park. Even if you're not playing, you are welcome to join us for lunch. It's catered by world-famous burger dog people from Silverado Country Club, and the full lunch is $20, and you can register online. Then mark your calendars for two special own eggs coming up. The first one is June 17th as we celebrate our synagogue director, Lauren Snyder, and her husband, Zach Snyder. Uh, we celebrate them uh, with an honoring them with an afruf. So it's a special night and uh, we look forward to that. And then June 24th will be our board installation. So our new board who started on June 1st, that would be including me. Um, so we're gonna have a special own egg for that and we look forward to seeing you as well. Don't miss Torah study on the 18th with Rabbi Goldstein. And on June 19th, we'll be hosting the Napa Valley Chamber Orchestra's concert beginning at 1.30 p.m. Join Soul Sisters Book Club on June 20th at 4 p.m. on Zoom, hosted by Ellen Elson, who is going to be reviewing Hello Darkness, My Old Friend by Sanford D. Greenberg. And then last, did you know that L'Chaim is back this summer? August 7th, and this is incredibly exciting, CBS will be at CIA Copia with a Jewish food, wine, and beer festival. Purchase tickets now for admission, tastings, and enjoy a summer day of Jewish entertainment, community, and Israeli dancing. Finally, we'd like to give a warm wishes to this week's birthdays and anniversaries. Happy birthday to Mark, our security guard. Yes, very important. George Jesuits. Kathleen Connery, Ari Masi, Isla Dell, and Rebecca Koch. And then happy anniversary to Daniel Schwartz and Charla Reinganum, 35 years, Naama and Itamar Abramovich, 11 years, 
and Michelle and Roderick Murray, 11 years. Thank you all again. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. As we reach the end of our service, we think of those who are no longer with us, those who have died both recently and in seasons past, those whom our friends and neighbors have lost, the martyrs of our people whose graves are unmarked, and those of every race and nation whose lives have been a blessing to humanity. As we rem remember them, we meditate on the meaning of love and loss, of life and death. We think of those who have died during the past year. Michael Gordon, Larry Elson, Arnold Trombler, Erica Cornelison, Gladys Shubin, Richard Magano, Clark Smith, Stephanie Rab Axner, David Ernesto Kaplan, Pat Pate, Annette Goldberg, Maggie Sherman, Sandra Benko Fichtenberg, Nicholas Huff, George Montano, Dean Wilson, Norman Charney, David Alpert, and Rene Munoz. We also remember and honor the yard sites, the anniversaries of the deaths of Toby Cohen, Louise Stern, Gary Wallace, Luba Tannen Abramovitz, Ada Santana, Michael Gordon, Gussie Eidelsheim, Leslie Goldman, John Nog, Frida Current Teller, and John Jacob Marks. And if anyone has a name they wish to add, I invite you to please do so. The Mourner's Cottage is on page 598. Please rise. Yit Gadal, Viet Kadash, Shmei Rabah, Vialma, Divra, Hirate, Vyamlich Malkute, Vichai Echon, Uvyom Echon, Uvchaye, Dechol, Beit Israel, Vagala, Uvizman, Kariv, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, Shmei Rabah, Mevorach, Lealam, Uame, Almaya. Yit Barach, Vishtabach, Viet Paar, Vitromam, Viet Nasev, Vitadar, Vitalev, Vitalal, Shmei de Kudsha, Berichu, Leela, Min Kobirchata, Vishirata, Tush bechata v'nechemata, damiran v'alma v'imru amen. Yehe shlama rabba min shvaya, v'chaim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'imru mav, huya se shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. May the source of peace grant peace to all those in mourning and comfort to all those who are bereaved, and let us all say amen. Please be seated. Before we invite Ari and his family up for Kiddush and Motzi at the very end, and then we have uh, an Oneg waiting for us, um, Gordon has a final song for us. And I'm not going to say anything about lambs. No. Well, so, I was going to do Donut Donut, but I'll do something okay. different. Uh, I had that planned all along. So we're going to do something that does tie into your, your little drosh there about keeping the Shabbat, you know, God says that we need, we need to keep Shabbat as a sign between us. And so we're going to do a song we often start with on page 129, Ki Esh Mera. Ki Esh Mera Shabbat El Yishmereni Ki Esh Mera Shabbat El Yishmereni Oti le o me ad vein o veini. Oti le o me ad vein o veini. The harmony goes like this. Ki yeshmer ashabat el yeshmereini. Ki yeshmer ashabat. Hail Yishmereni, O Tila O Mead, Veino Veini, O Tila O Mead, Veino Veini. He 
to invite Ari and your family to come back up to the bima and everyone else to please rise. We're going to do the Kiddush Emotzi. We're going to do the slightly longer Kiddush on page 123 if you want to follow along. I think we're going to need you to kind of guide us. Sure, okay. Yeah. You, guys, you guys know the longer Kiddush. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Baruch Atah Olam Bore Puriha Gafen Baruch Atadanai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav Baratzavanu Vishabbat Kacho Biyahava Uvratzon Hinchilanu Zicharon Lemaase Bereshit Ki Hu Yom Tehila Le Migraye Kodesh, Zecher Litziat Mitzrayim, Kivanu Vacharta, Liotanu Kidashta, Mikola Amim, Veshabat Kachecha, Yahava Uvratzon. In Khaltanu, Baruchata Adunai, Mikadesh Ashabat. Amen. Okay, we have the Motzi in anticipation of the Oneg waiting for us. So who wants to hold this? Oops. That's okay. I dropped a piece. Ah, no, Drop another one. piece. That's okay. Jordan, you want to grab part of it? Right. He's busy drinking wine. Feels, yeah, right. feels like Tashlich. Right, okay. Baruch Atadonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Habotzi Lechem Min Haaretz Amen Pateavon Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat Shalom Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Shabbat, Shalom. Shabbat, Shalom. Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Shabbat, 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 Shalom. Shabbat, Shalom. Shabbat, Shalom. Shabbat, 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 Shalom. That's good. She made it. No, it was, no I, I just, I haven't put my mouth on it. It's good. Okay, nice slaughtered lamb. Cool lamb.